Okay, we're going to run through some tools and, and some applications using some of the ideas that we were talking about in this lecture regarding including variables running regressions, but this is going to be more about some tricks, some tools to use in R. And so if you have R running, we're going to run this, uh, load this familiar data set um, on cars, since that's our theme, in the mass library. So um, we need to load the library uh, for mass, capital M-A-S-S, -S, and then that will allow us to attach the cars 93 data set and let's go ahead and do a summary of the cars 93 data set and remember this s shortcut won't work unless you have typed s equals summary to define that shortcut for you before and so this brings up the the variables we've seen before and suppose we wanted to model price we wanted to explain the price of a car just using straight lines and uh, we'll look at whether that's a good idea later on, but let's just uh, explain price. How would we do that? Well, I would brainstorm what are all the important factors that would explain the price of a car. And after brainstorming, I would hope that I had all those variables in this data set. And if I didn't, I would need to go collect some more data. Let's just assume we have everything we need here, plus some things we don't need. And... Let's suppose, even though I know that manufacturer might be important, I, I might want to do a study where I don't want to focus on the manufacturer. I want to focus on the properties of a car that people are willing to pay money for. And this is what you call a hedonic pricing study. From the word hedonism, hedonic means we want to figure out what gives people pleasure, what people are willing to pay more for. What do people like about a product? So in order to explain the price, uh, maybe people might be willing to pay for better gas mileage. Maybe they're willing to pay for airbags. Again, this is in 1993, so not all cars had airbags. Maybe people are willing to pay different amounts for different types of drivetrain. Front uh, wheel drive, rear wheel drive, or four wheel drive. Cylinders, engine size, and horsepower. Well, those all get into the idea of a powerful engine. You don't want to include all three of those things because they're highly correlated. Remember we mentioned that before. So you probably want to pick one of those things uh, to represent powerful engines. And uh, let's, let's go with horsepower. RPM, to be honest, that's probably RPM at maximum horsepower. And since I don't know why you'd want to pay more or less for that, let's, let's leave it out. I don't know what rev per mile is actually. I need to look that up in this data set. Let's leave it out. Manual transmission available. I don't know why that would be important for the price. Also fuel tank capacity. My judgment is to leave it out. Passengers. Maybe yes, maybe no, but it doesn't seem clear to me that that, that would explain price. Now you could throw in all these things just, just to see what happens. Uh, but I'm going to use a little bit more restrictive uh, definition here. And again, a lot of this is a judgment call. Length of the car, I don't see why that should matter. Wheelbase, don't see why that would matter. Width, no. Turning circle, no. Rear seat room, maybe. But we have to make the judgment here that if we use rear seat room as a variable, there are two cars that don't have either don't have rear seats. That would be my guess or the data is just missing. I would think that there are a couple of cars that are just uh, don't have rear seats. Luggage room, some have no luggage room. Maybe sports cars. So if we used that, even though it might be valuable, you have to realize you're going to pay a price in that your sample size will be smaller. And uh, so I'm going to leave that out. Maybe weight might be an important variable. Um, now you might say, why would you be willing to pay for that? Well, I'm thinking more on the cost side. Maybe a heavier vehicle might cost more because it costs more to build. Uh, origin, made in the USA or not, we'll throw that in. Make you can't throw in because uh, there are, uh, that's just one for each car. 
And so that would be like saying that every car has a different price, and that's why they have a different price. You, you can't really do that. So let's uh, let's throw in all these variables uh, that we just discussed and see what happens. Oh, I also want to throw in type. And what type is going to do is it's going to make one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six categories. R will automatically make five dummy variables. And we'll see how those work. So let's go ahead and run a regression. We'll call it uh, car.reg1 equals lm uh, price tilde. And we'll just go through and put all these mpg.city and uh, oh type. So type plus mpg.city um, plus airbags, drivetrain, which these will also set up dummy variables. Since there are three categories for each of these, R will give two dummy variables. Plus, and be careful that you type these names in exactly. Look, I put a, a dot there in drivetrain. There isn't one in the variable name, so we need to go back and remove that. Okay. And we have drivetrain. We have airbags. We have horsepower. And weight and origin. We'll we'll just put these in here. So horsepower plus weight plus origin. Okay, if I left anything out, that's okay. You can throw it in and see what happens later. Let's look at our results. Now note that since I named this car.reg1, it's going to overwrite the car.reg1 that we worked on before that I, I already named it. So let's look at our results. Remember I said that since there are six different types of cars, R is going to make five dummy variables. It's going to omit one of them. And it, om it omitted the compact car category. And normally what R will do is omit the one that is alphabetically first. And so compact starts with C. It omits one of the variables because we have to have something to compare to. And in this case, these five variables will all tell us how these different types of cars how their prices will compare to the um, price of a compact car. So this type large 1.784 tells us that ceteris paribus, everything else equal, that a large car will sell for $1,784 more than a compact car. A midsize $4,060 roughly more than a compact car. Small $2,000 less than a compact car and a sporty $3,318 less than compact and a van $2,867 more than a compact car. Now again not all of these estimates are going to make sense with what we thought before and it why not? Well it could mean that our, we have some variables that are missing that should be in there. It could be that our functional form is wrong or it could be that some of these numbers are just, we're not confident about the difference. We're not confident about the, the estimate of the difference. But it's just an estimate uh, that's not very precise. And we'll talk about how you tell that later on. Basically, the standard error gives us an idea of with what precision we're measuring these slopes. Miles per gallon in the city, uh, negative. So each additional mile per gallon, $270 less since these are in thousands. The dependent variables in thousands. Again, for airbags, we have two dummy variables that compare to an omitted category. And these, this airbag driver only and airbag none, tell us how these cars compare to the omitted category. And if we go back up and look at the categories, driver and passenger, is the first category alphabetically and that is omitted. So these coefficients tell us how these cars compare to a car that has driver and passenger airbags both. So if you only have a driver but not a passenger airbag, 
$2,943 less. If you have no airbags, compared to driver and passenger both, having the airbag about $6,000 less. So rather than, than looking at all these, let's just look at the R squared, which is 76.5% uh, of the variation in the price is explained with this all these variables. And so that's not too bad. Now we're going to come back in a minute and I'm going to show you some tricks that you can use when you write up a report uh, that will help you with some of the ideas that we were talking about earlier.